I'm going to go through some of the options that I've played with uh, to make setup better for uh, me and the way I work with the smart bench. One of the things I do is I've, I've built a jig that will help locate full panels into the same index point. So if I put a full 4x8 4997 melamine sheet or plywood, jam it against this stop here and here, uh, then I know, and I home the machine, then I know where the tool is going to be to start with. And so I have it always indexed in the same place. And the way I made this, I cut an end cap to fit snugly in here, uh, just out of half inch MDF. Didn't care what the material was, but I wanted it to fit flush so that the material would be able to go o over on top of it. Uh, and then I put a sheet, just an off cut, probably 12 inches wide on top of it, oriented it to the back of this just by hand, I didn't care, screwed it in, and then um, lifted this up, put a piece of quarter inch spacers under here to raise the whole thing up a quarter of an inch so it's now above the material, and then just using the controller, I lowered, turned on the spindle, lowered it down a few millimeters, went back and forth in the, in the X direction, lowered it down a little more, made another pass, another pass, another pass, until I had cut this out, and then I came to this way in the Y direction. I overcut it to the back from zero, zero, so that I could index it, and it would have a clean corner to work with. Um, lifted it back up, took the spacers out, and put it back down. You want to do this carefully, because you don't want to cut too too deep. That's why I put the spacers underneath it, so you because you, you don't want to cut the edge of your table. Uh, but that gives a nice reference point uh, for full, full panel work. Um, so basically at that point I'd grab a full sheet, this is just some, some scrap garbage, but say that's a full sheet, I'd index it right here, and then put a clamp on the other end, a pressure clamp, or screw through, the way I set mine up, I've got an inch and a half, two to two inches that I can screw through right here, uh, into this replaceable piece of garbage. So if I don't have any machining to happen right here, or, or I've set my nest to be a half inch in, I can I can countersink some uh, some Craig screws in here in this edge, and never have an issue. Now one thing I did also, I marked two lines where the frame is. So if I do decide to screw this in, I don't want to hit the frames, but because I won't see them, so I know where they are. And then I also put index marks here. So that if I've surfaced a spoil board or there's a piece that I remove because I've got a fixture jig in it or something like that, I can pull them right in and, and slide the panel left or right so that the, my marks line up on both my jig, my permanent or my indexing jig, and the, and the piece or spoil board that I'm working with. So that's a little tip. I've got the same thing on the end. And I also, on the when I'm transporting this, I have one of these that I've put casters on and cut it for uh, a strap. So I have a ratchet strap that goes on it. So I flip the bench over, put this in, put have the casters facing up. They'll be on the ground, and then I've got the bars underneath it, and I can ratchet everything together. And I brought it in. I brought it into the AWFS show in one load. I took the entire unit in and just wheeled it in with one hand. Uh, so if you're transporting your unit a lot, that may make a lot of sense for you too. So, again, the smart bench, it's a versatile tool. Set it up the way you want it, and uh, it's very simple to, to use and, and make it yours. My first demo unit was a pre-production unit, um, so it was sized a little differently. But this is the end cap piece that goes in. And, uh, of course, I'd make it fit exactly, but I put fixed casters on it. Just cut a, some pockets all the way through so that I could run a ratchet strap. So I'd put it on pull it around and the ratchet strap was long enough that I could put the legs on once it's inverted and the Y-beam and ratchet it all down and of course with my dog holes bench holes that I put through the the bench I can go back through it at any point and and connect something to it and I could just wheel this thing in to a trade show or I did it to two trade shows um, so I thought a picture's worth a thousand words so that may help a little more than trying to explain it